Welcome back to Ashton Gate. It feels so good saying that with fans here. Another opportunity, and it's onside, and it's two for Bristol City, and this time, and it's in! An early goal for Bristol City, and Andy Vyman is back! And it goes clear ahead of Bristol City, and they are level! It's a first goal for Andy King for his boyhood club! Well, good afternoon and a very warm welcome to Robins TV for the next instalment in this turbulent championship season. Today we mark the sacrifice, though, of the Ashton Gate 8, who, of course, 40 years ago tore up their contracts, saving this club from extinction. And it's that level of commitment, of course, that Nigel Pearson will be hoping that his side can display today on the pitch as they look to bounce back from that defeat in South Wales against Swansea City. Chris Wilde as Middlesbrough arrive in the South West, buoyed under his stewardship this season and pushing for a place in the Premier League. They sit sixth as it stands in the Championship table and has, have only lost once, I should say, of their last 13 games. Bristol City boys turning up earlier on. We're going to get team news in a couple of moments time. Sam Bell there sharing a bit of a joke with the coaching staff. And of course, Bristol City's home form has been impressive of late. They picked up three wins at Ashton Gate more recently. It's just their away form that has been letting them down. Middlesbrough, very impressive though at the back. So it's going to take a lot for that strike trio of Semenya, Vyman and Martin to break down that back three. Let's have a look at today's sides then that will go toe to toe. Chris Wilder has an abundance of talent to choose from after strengthening in the January transfer window and following their victory over Derby County last weekend. Quite rightly, he names an unchanged side. Their back three consists of former Manchester United man Paddy McNair, Dale Fry in there as well, as well as Dyke Steele. In midfield, Johnny Howson, remarkably, is now approaching 650 career appearances. And today, he captains the side. He is partnered by the hero from Old Trafford after Middlesbrough knocked out Manchester United in the FA Cup. Uh, Matt Crooks in there. Up front, youngsters Connolly and Balogun will be uh, out to test Bristol City's back four today. They are on loan from Brighton and Arsenal, respectively. And then lots of experience on the bench with Sol Bamba, of course, after his long time out uh, recovering from uh, cancer. He's back. He's on the bench as well today for Middlesbrough. Lee Peltier as well, plus new signing Australian international Riley McGree. And then as for Bristol City, well, three changes today. And there's been a lot of debate in the lead up to the game this afternoon as to how this side will shape up today. Zach Viner and Cam Pring drop out of defence. And how about this? Sam Bell makes his first start of the season as we believe uh, a wing back today. Dan Bentley comes in uh, to make his 400th career appearance after he was substituted on at the Liberty Stadium. Max O'Leary misses out through injury. Then the other change sees Joe Williams come back into midfield. Excited to see now, I'm sure many Bristol City fans will share the same feeling to see how he can kick on as part of Nigel Pearson's side. Uh, slightly in front of him, Masengo and Scott keep their places in behind that attacking trio of Vyman, Semenyo and Martin, who again continued uh, their vain scoring form at the Liberty Stadium last weekend. On the bench for Bristol City, Harvey Wiles Richards is replacement goalkeeper, and then Robbie Cundy makes another appearance on the bench along with Tommy Conway, Naki Wells and Eamon Benarus. Right, let's hear from the man that picked today's sides. It's Nigel Pearson with Robins TV. Nigel, let's start with the team news. Sam Bell in today, you've given him a start. What will he bring? Big smile and pace and energy. In terms of his qualities, how does that fit into how you want to play today? Um, well, clearly he is a, an attacking player and um, we want him to, to bring some energy and some enthusiasm to our game. Um, yeah, I think I've said enough over the last week in terms of where we've disappointed um, sometimes of late. Um, but I mean, the most important thing is that we have a positive performance out there and uh, the selection reflects that. Being tight defensively, is that one of the real fundamental <laughs> keys you want to show today? Well, we'll need to be not just 
to date. Uh, moving forward, I think there is there is um, an element of our defensive play that needs to be um, looked at. But in the short term, it's more about finding ways to to win games, which, with given the squad that we have, is the best way for us to go. So I'm, I'm very reluctant to tinker with uh, the elements of our team that are doing well. Um, it's more about how can we pose problems for our opponents, and uh, yeah. So it's it, today's game against a very good side. We have to be uh, we have to be very positive and uh, and make sure that we leave nothing inside. Your focus will be on the 90 plus minutes, yeah. but as an occasion, how significant it will be for the Ashton Gate 8 to walk out there and get what will be a fantastic round of applause? Yeah, well, I, I hope they, um, the lads and, and their families, um, enjoy today. Uh, I, I think the, the Borough fans too will give them a warm reception. Um, we spoke yesterday about, about Middlesbrough's um, problems in the 80s too, so... I think it's really important that that we as a club and as a community and the greater community recognise recognise them. But I'm sure that as well, not all of them are Bristol City fans, but the majority of them are Bristol City fans will um, will be feeling the same as our wider audience, and that is we want a positive performance and three points. All the best today. Yeah. Cheers. Thanks. Nigel Pearson there with uh, Dave Barton. So a reminder of today's sides. Three changes for Bristol City. Joe Williams comes in today along with Sam Bell, maybe surprising a few Bristol City fans as well. And then Dan Bentley to make his 400th career appearance, which is fantastic. A pretty blustery, wet day at Ashton Gate, as you can probably imagine after the storm yesterday. But a strong contingent of both Bristol City and travelling Middlesbrough fans as well. 1,800 have made the trip down from Teesside. And as you can see there, the weather, not the best, but the atmosphere building nicely. And ahead of kickoff, we will be... Uh, Honouring the Ashton Gate 8, of course, who tore up their contracts 40 years ago to save this football club from the brink. Those of you that are watching overseas today, uh, we want to hear from you as much as possible. There will be some of you uh, watching on YouTube and Facebook, so make sure you leave your comments in the boxes below there. Get your questions in as well. Ali Hines will be joining us uh, shortly as well on Robins TV, and we can uh, hopefully put those to him uh, throughout the game this afternoon. Right, now it's time to hear from one of the Ashton Gate 8. I caught up with Peter Aitken earlier on, pitch side here at Ashton Gate. Peter, when you stand here pitch side in a, in a stadium that ultimately wouldn't be here if it wasn't for yours and seven other men's actions, how does it make you feel? Well, the stadium is absolutely, it, it's Premier League. You know, it's not just a, an average stadium in the, in the Football League. It is a Premier League stadium. And all credit to Bristol City Football Club and uh, Steve Lansdowne and his board of directors. You know, they've built something quite phenomenal here. There's no doubt about that. And when you reflect now, 40 years ago, on the moment, you know, you and these seven other men tore up their contracts, how, how do you reflect on those moments and, and the moments leading up to that as well? Well, I, I, we were in a situation we could have curtailed you know, the life of Bristol City Football Club, which as footballers, we didn't want to do that. Um, and obviously, having been, you know, in the last 24 hours, being shown around all the training facilities and one thing and another, you know, this football club hasn't stood back and wasted its time. It's got on with it. And it's it's up there with the rest of the some of the great stadiums we've got in the country. And as we mark 40 years as well, have you felt that extra affinity towards the club? The fact that you've been able to go up, look at the high performance centre, look around Ashton Gate and, and gather together with some of the other chaps that were in the same situation as you as well? Well, I suppose a lot of people still realise that I'm, I'm very much a, a, a gas head. Um, but, uh, you know, for, for my team, it, it is something to you know try and emulate what they've got here um, and at the moment uh, we're a long way from that absolutely and in terms of last night and the occasion as well you're up in the uh, Lansdowne stand there how is that for you obviously mixing with former players you know a bit sooner than your playing days necessarily at Bristol City how was the occasion last night 
Well, there were there were a few emotional moments last night, especially uh, for the likes of Jerry Sweeney, Trevor Tate, and Dave Rogers, um, but and Jeff Merrick, and those lads who have been at the club all their life and given everything. I was here for two minutes, so you know the strains for me weren't so bad. But seeing what they've done, the number of games they've played, and, and what they gave up actually for for this to transpire and develop, you know, it's. Uh, you know, yes, it was. It was for them. My feelings were for them last night, not so much for me. And for them as well, a touching moment yesterday when the players um, up at the High Performance Centre applauded you guys as you as you walked in up there. And that must have been nice. Well, there's there's nothing nicer than you know fellow professionals showing respect to one another, and they gave us that. You know, and uh, it was lovely to walk in and see the players there, the management, the coaching staff, and uh, yes, it was. Uh, it was a touching moment. Peter, thank you very much for your time and hopefully to mark the occasion, Bristol City get three points today. Well, good luck. All the best. <laughs> Peter Aitken there, making his uh, feelings known that he is still a Bristol Rovers fan, I think, by the sounds of things. Nonetheless, I think he wants Bristol City to win today, which would be uh, uh, fantastic. I also caught up with Jerry Sweeney as well uh, with Robins TV and you can check that interview out on uh, Twitter if you... Uh, Want to just have a look across the social media channels this afternoon right let's have a look at the other fixtures that are taking place across the championship uh, today not too many goals as you can see but of course none of these games have kicked off yet but one of the early games uh, fulham at home to huddersfield and a shock result you can see there huddersfield went two nil up at craven cottage fulham pulling back a late goal but it wasn't to be so maybe that switches things up slightly uh, at the top of the championship table. One side that were fighting up at the top are Blackburn Rovers and things have sort of tailed off slightly for them in recent weeks. So a big chance for them to get back to winning ways. Cardiff at home to Blackpool. That'll be interesting to see how that one transpires after Bristol City's tricky trip up to Bloomfield Road. They'll fancy their chances. Blackpool at the Cardiff City Stadium today. Coventry and Barnsley. Derby County and Peterborough go head to head today. Uh, bottom of the table clash as they look to stave off relegation. Derby will feel as though now, certainly with the result in midweek between Peterborough and Reading, that their survival hopes are alive and kicking. Luton will feel as though they can get a result at home as well to West Brom. I am sure, of course, West Brom losing their manager, Valerian Ishmael, uh, a few weeks ago, replaced now by Steve Bruce. So maybe they'll see the new manager bounce that we've become accustomed to over the years. Preston and Reading go head to head as well. QPR and Hull City, big game between Sheffield United and Swansea. And then Stoke will hope to, uh, I'm sure, keep pressure on the top six as well as they're at home to Birmingham City. Right, we're going to take a short break now, but still to come, we catch up with Jeff Merrick, who was up at the HPC yesterday, and we head back to 2009 as well for a classic where Nicky Maynard uh, took centre stage.
welcome back to Robins TV. And if, as if by magic, I should say, uh, Ali Hines has now joined us uh, from the training ground. You've had a bit of a shocker of a morning, Ali. You've lost your phone and everything. Busy day, but no, glad to be here. So thanks for having me. No worries at all. And of course, a poignant day with the Ashton Gate Eight and their um, heroics 40 years ago being uh, being essentially honoured today, and, and a massive occasion. Sure, massive occasion. You know what, what the guys did that that day. It was incredible feat, um, and it's great to see them getting rewarded. Fabulous. And uh, we've got a special opportunity here as well. If you wouldn't mind holding up these no scratch problem. cards here, these are signed uh, by the Ashton Gate 8. And if you're uh, down at Ashton Gate today and you're watching the pre match show on Facebook or YouTube, you can go and grab one of the scratch cards and be in with a chance uh, of winning. Of course, if you are watching Robins TV and you are overseas, but you're back maybe on Tuesday night for the game on Tuesday, you can also get your hands on uh, one of those as well. Right, uh, speaking of the Ashton Gate 8, it's now time to head over to the HPC where they were yesterday afternoon and Jeff Merrick caught up with George West. Jeff, welcome to Robins TV and to the Robins High Performance Centre on the weekend of the 40th anniversary of the Ashton Gate 8. Um, just how has it been to be back at the club and be welcomed in by Richard Gordon and the staff today? <coughs> well, I, I think it's... It's been superb. I mean, I'll be totally honest. It's been an eye opener, and it's been absolutely superb. I think that what you have here is just absolutely amazing. It's very impressive. Obviously, it's <laughs> the world of football has changed a lot. We were talking about it previously. Um, an amazing facility up here, and obviously down at Ashton Gate as well. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I still go. I go. I go with friends to um, Ashton Gate and. The facilities are second to none. It's a proper day out. It's, you know, when I went, you could get a cup of bovril and a pie if you were lucky. Now you can have a three course meal, you know. So it's everything here, down there. It's all improved and it's all, all in, improved to make better facilities and better football. Um, just for me, it sort of overalls my feeling of football when. Most of my football was rough and ready. It was, you know, the facilities were rough and ready. The football match was rough and ready. Now it's such a silky, um, pleasant type of thing, which is not quite my style. <laughs> Obviously, this is all part of a very poignant weekend in yes. terms of the anniversary. Um, how has it been to see your teammates, etc., that you were previously oh, with? Yeah, yeah, my teammates. Well, I mean, it's been lovely. I mean, we, we don't get together very often. When we do, it's as if we haven't ever been apart. Most of us came to Bristol as young players and went through to the first team, got Bristol City promotion to the first division. Um, and all that time, we used to socialise together. We were always out together. Everything was done en masse. So to see them again today is wonderful. Jeff Merritt there with uh, George West. And of course, one of the changing rooms up at the HPC was uh, named after Jeff. So a, a touching tribute uh, to one of the members of the Ashton Gate 8. And uh, speaking of them, if you look over our left shoulder just here, Downsy is there, pitch side with the camera team with uh, Paul Cheesley as well, and it looks as though we're about to welcome the Ashton Gate 8 onto the surface there, quite rightly to receive a, a round of applause too, which is fantastic and brilliant to see so many Bristol City fans already taking their seats ahead of kickoff. You never usually see it that packed quite this early on in the afternoon, and you'll see the, the flag the going across the south stand there as well, which is fantastic. And uh, Ali, looking ahead mm -hmm. to today's game, Sam Ben in the starting 11. Proud, yeah. obviously, moment for you, given yeah. your uh, affiliation with the under-23s and, and the remainder of the academy. How do you see him slotting in today, and will there be some nerves on his part? I think Sam, yeah, it's great to see him out there. Um, I'm, I'm sure there will be nerves, but I'm sure from the first minute he'll overcome that and, and he'll get on with the job. Um, interested to see him playing fullback today, but I think with uh, Joe Williams maybe at the base of the diamond, I think they were looking on that yesterday today he might drop in and make sure Sam can then get a little bit higher into the wing back area and what will Mickey think of that as well it's, it's fascinating well, really that yeah. you know you've gone from a two well I guess Sam Bell we, we know him as a striker yeah. but to be yeah. going back to sort of left back now is, is yeah. fascinating yeah really. I think I think Mickey will be super proud um, I know he's done a lot of hard work with Sam as well over the years uh, I think the academy will be super proud but but Sam's a top player 
and good players can play in any position as we've seen so um, I'm sure he'll do great. And Joe Williams, a nod to him as well, back in the starting 11 today, a bit quieter against Swansea when he came on, I think generally the, the conditions though had a big mm. factor in the, the magnitude and the situation as well. But when he has come on this season, we've seen glimpses of just how much quality he does have. And Nigel Pearson speaks so highly of him. I think Joe offers great energy in the middle of the park. He's got an edge to him, a bite to him, which we like to see. Um, but he's, he's a good leader on the pitch as well, as well as off it, to be honest with you. But um, yeah, get him going again, I'm sure. From, from the first minute to, the, to right to the end, he'll produce the goods. Absolutely. Thank you very much, uh, Ali. Right, now it's time to get in the mood for the game today. Let's head back to 2009 when Nicky Maynard took centre stage. Strong man there. And uh, you can just see the Bristol City are getting more confident. They're getting on the ball now and uh, an opportunity could come. Here's Maynard with an opportunity perhaps from Paul Hartley. Maynard on his right foot. Excellent finish. Bristol City lead 1-0. Well, terrific play by Nicky Maynard. The ball was through from Paul Hartley. Maynard cutting into his right foot and City's top scorer scores again. Well, we were just saying, weren't we, that since Akinde came on, the back four of Middlesbrough have looked very unsure of themselves, not enjoying the physical presence of Akinde up there. And uh, we just felt that at Bristol City's chance was going to come. And sure enough, very good ball through. And Maynard is just not going to miss at the moment. He's given a chance like that. Absolutely superb. That's right. You can never, you can never say it's over against a team with uh, the likes of Lita, Johnson, Arca, all capable of creating something. And McAllister, who are complimenting, just made a horrible challenge, and in the end, the referee is given a penalty. Well, it was handball by Lewis Carey. It did look blatant from up here. He was just trying to catch the eye of his assistant to see if it was handball and he got the signal and uh, as soon as he got that he quite rightly gave the uh, decision I don't think Bristol City can, can, can complain about a great deal there it was uh, as clear cut as they come I'm afraid I think it's one of those that if it had been given in the other direction Bristol City would have expected a penalty to be given as it is Adam Johnson has an opportunity to equalise for Middlesbrough and continue their unbeaten start to the season straight down the middle of the goal Adam Johnson has equalised for Middlesbrough both sides suddenly fancying they can win this game Harley looking for the run of Maynard Maynard onside and he peels away from Wheater Maynard with a great chance Maynard on the right foot Bristol City has stolen it in stoppage time Nicky Maynard the man in form terrific long ball forward on the half volley Bristol City have stolen all three points Nicky Maynard with his 50th career goal has produced it at just the right time well, it was a great ball over the top from Hartley, wasn't it? We've said all afternoon that the pace of Maynard hanging on the shoulder of that final defender has worried them and worried them. And once again, he's gone through and he is a man in supreme form at the moment. His confidence is flowing from him. And he was never in any doubt that he was just going to slide that pass to keeper and, and gave him absolutely no chance in the corner of the net. His 100th league appearance for uh, Nicky Maynard this afternoon and 50 goals. And what a way to celebrate it with a goal in the 90th minute against Middlesbrough. Nicky Maynard there, what a player he was, of course, playing at Tranmere now. Yeah, good player, a great finisher, great pace. So, um, no, he scored a lot of goals in his career. And in, in an attacking sense, City recently have been looking very, very sharp. We've sort of bemoaned Bristol City's lack of creativity at times in previous seasons, but in an attacking sense, we're looking, you know, all guns blazing at the moment. Yeah, definitely. I think we're exciting to watch going forward in possession, uh, creating chances, scoring goals. It's just the other side now, out of possession, can we you know, keep the back door shut. Absolutely, and, and talking of that, huge that Dan Bentley's back in the side today, makes his 400th career appearance as well. We've now got that combination of him and Closer as well, which will be interesting with Callas and his athleticism. Callas will basically be allowed, hopefully now, to kind of focus on his own game a little bit more. Yeah, definitely, and I think it's great to have Dan Bentley back in the team. Obviously, Max picked up a little injury, um, but I'm sure Bentz has been working, well, he definitely has been. He's been working hard behind the scenes to get his chance, and I'm sure he'll produce today. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, fascinating as well, looking over our shoulder now, the atmosphere you can see there from our pictures in the Atio stand, Middlesbrough fans doing their bit of, as well of course. They were in a similar situation back in 1986 and they're now chairman, bailed them out of that situation. So uh, very much affiliated with a, a similar situation. Right now, uh, it's time for us to say goodbye to those of you that are watching today on YouTube and Facebook. But if those of you that are watching are overseas, you can still 
uh, download your match day pass now at robins.bcfc.co.uk. Can Bristol City get back to winning ways in front?